Well, with the most recent wipe having completely overhauled how armor works and completely changing on what's good and what's terrible, I figured that there was not a better time to make an armor tier list. Before I start ranking things though, I want to mention that this video is mostly based on my own experiences, but there is also some information that I pulled from both Airwing Marine and Gigabeef. Uh, if you want to learn more about the armor system in depth and how every little thing works, be sure to go check out their channels. I will link them in the description. All right, we're gonna start off with what I call plate sources. These are armored rigs and plate carriers that have very good armored plates, but the rigs themselves don't offer any extra protection and just don't really have a reason to be run. For example, the Tagila rig. The Tagila rig has some nice tier six armored plates. However, it leaves your uh, armpits completely exposed, doesn't protect anything up here, leaves your shoulders very exposed. Except for the armored plate itself, it offers basically no protection whatsoever. So for that reason, you are best taking the armored plate out of this thing and putting it into another armored rig that does offer extra protection. So for that reason, it should only be ever used for its armor. It's just not great. That's going into plate source. So is the HPC and the TAC Tech. The TAC Tech does offer just a little bit of extra protection. It's not great though, it's still very, very exposed. What I will say about these two armors is that they have one of the best armored plates in the game, in my opinion. It's incredibly lightweight and it's tier five protection. So if you get one of these, take the plate out, put it in something else. These rigs themselves are not great. Again, they're gonna go into plate sources. Um, some other ones that really are the exact same are the Slick, the, uh, the Hex Grid, uh, the Tasmanian Tiger, and both of the uh, Goon Rigs. There's just unfortunately not a big reason to run these other than the armor plate themselves. And now that you're able to remove that plate and put it into something better, these are kind of just terrible. Keep in mind that with this video, I am not at all accounting for drip factor since I want these rankings to be a bit more serious. So if you want to run these just because they look good, you have my respect, do it, that's awesome. But from a practical protection standpoint, these things are just not doing too well. Uh, now we're gonna go into F tier. Uh, first of all, the tar bank, no surprise there. Bear, it's worse than a Paca, offers basically no protection. It's soft armor, which is not great nowadays since hard armor prevents any blunt damage pass through, whereas soft armor does not. So that's going into F tier. Joining it in F tier is the Korakulan. I hate this thing. It offers very minimal coverage, except for the very front chest and back. And on top of lackluster protection, it's only tier three, it's freaking heavy. Why is it so heavy? If you, this is a weighted vest for a crossfitter. The only reason you are wearing this is you're trying to level strength. Otherwise it has no purpose. It's going into F tier. In D tier, we have the Paca, basically the exact same as the Tarbank, only slightly better. The Paca used to be better because everyone used to have very good ammo. What I mean is, it didn't matter if you were in, a, if you were fighting a player, they had at the bare minimum M856A1, uh, 762 PS, something that would rip straight through tier two and pretty much tier four armor as well. So you would run the Paca since it had the same effect against players as better armors did, but it was lighter and it was cheaper and it would still protect you against most scav rounds. Nowadays, with people running around with all sorts of bullets like SP, HP, um, all these low end bullets, having tier two armor is just not a smart plan anymore because tier three armor actually makes a difference nowadays. Tier four armor will actually save you quite often. So yeah, the Paca is just, it's struggling right now. It doesn't have a niche. It's going to go into D tier. Uh, also going into D tier is the green Paca. I think it's called the 6B2. I'm not sure. Um, basically the exact same thing, except I think this one is hard armor. I think it's titanium, so it doesn't allow blunt damage pass through. But the armor rating is still bad enough that that really doesn't make a huge difference. So that is also going into D tier. Then we have the tan 6B5. This might come as a surprise to some people. It offers very solid tier three protection all over the front and I'm pretty sure it even covers the, the goods. But the problem is, is it is only tier two protection in the back. As someone who gets shot in the back quite often, whether it be from a rat, a scav, or just somebody I was running away with because I stood no chance against them, I really would prefer to have more than a thin layer of cardboard between my back and a bullet. So. For that reason, I, I don't like this. I don't like this armor. I don't like the lack of back coverage. 
it's going to go into D tier. Also going into D tier is the Rat Rig. Tier 4 protection in the front, quite solid coverage overall. Unfortunately, tier 2 protection in the back. That's just, that really is terrible to me. I do not like that. So that is also going to drop into D tier. And starting us off in C tier, we have the Baggery, or Bagar IE. I, I don't know how to say it. Um, this thing is not great. It's only got tier 2 Aramid in, as extra protection. It's not very accessible, very cumbersome, very heavy, and its plates are overall just better in other armors. So it almost is a plate source, but I wouldn't go that far because it still does have a pretty nice uh, rig configuration. Overall, though, it's just not great. It's going to go into C tier. Um, another, joining it in C tier is the Anatactical M2. The M2 rig used to be one of my favorites, which is why I'm sad that it's kind of garbage right now. But again, its coverage is just not great. Your throat is completely exposed. Your armpits are barely, if at all, covered. Even if you can put in the side plates, they hang pretty low, so your armpits are still fairly exposed. It doesn't have much of a reason to be used other than it looks cool. And that's great, but unfortunately, that doesn't earn it anything more than a C tier. Uh, the Dr. Disrespect armor is just a souped up Paka. Um, it's actually really good because it's very light. It offers solid early wipe protection, and that protection actually extends a bit later into the wipe nowadays because of how hard it is to get solid viable ammo. So this might be a very solid rig to run nowadays, but it's only tier three. So it's gonna go into C tier. Um, I'm gonna make it clear, I view C tier as the bare minimum armor you should be using. Like, this is what's acceptable, this is okay. Um, nothing special, but good enough. I wanna make that clear, because some people think C tier is bad, it isn't, it's just passable. Um, also in C tier is the Untar armor. Uh, basically the exact same as the Dr. Disrespect armor, except this one has hard plates. Uh, it's made of titanium, so, and it covers all the way around, even under the, uh, even on the sides, and it doesn't leave too much of your armpit exposed, so, uh, fairly solid protection, available fairly early on, uh, hard plates, so that it doesn't allow any blunt damage pass through. Decent enough armor, it's gonna go into C. Oh yeah, speaking of armor, real quick, let's talk about a different type of armor. Mm, yes, flawless transition. That's right, this video is brought to you by War Thunder, the most in-depth vehicle combat simulator available on both PC and console. Featuring over 2,500 vehicles from 10 different countries, it has everything you need to scratch that itch for armored warfare. Tanks, ships, and planes ranging from the supersonic era all the way back to when these things were held together by hopes, prayers, and kitchen twine. These vehicles aren't just hitboxes with health pools either. Major components have been intricately modeled to provide realistic damage. You hit someone in the fuel tank, they catch fire. You hit somebody in the ammo stowage, they join the space program. With three major game types, War Thunder allows you to dictate the balance between fun and intensity. Do you want a more casual experience with an emphasis on stupidity and fun? Arcade mode is for you. Do you want to sweat like you're an actual tanker in the Middle East? Try simulator battles. If you want something that falls in between those two extremes, realistic battles has you covered. Play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link below, and new and returning players who haven't touched the game in six months will receive a massive sign-on bonus including premium vehicles, 100,000 silver lions, the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, seven days of premium account. On top of all that, to celebrate the New Year's, all players that sign up before the end of January will also receive this Gaijin snail decal including the Grinch, Rudolph, and Elf. All this available for a short time only, so be sure to sign up quick. And back to it. I believe this is called the 6B13. This is actually a pretty solid piece of armor, and it offers a nice, uh, it's the first armor I've talked about that offers throat protection, which is very, very nice. Uh, it's tier two aramid in the throat and on the parts that aren't covered by a plate, but I do have a few issues with it. One, it uses Eastern style plates. I don't like Eastern plates in Escape from Tarkov that much since apparently it exposes more of your chest, which, um, I think it's kind of dumb. I think it's kind of dumb that this area up here is considered uh, thorax because getting shot up here would not be nearly as devastating as getting shot here. But that's just the way it is. I don't think we should mod vital organs into the game, but I think that this area up here should probably count more as the shoulder, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, the other big issue I have with this armor is there's a big ol' hole on the side of the armor. Now, I'm, I'm all for having some solid mobility, but this this cut is just freaking ridiculous. Like, seriously, this looks like the thing that people do at the gym where they just take an old shirt and they cut a massive hole all the way down it. It just... 
why is the armpit hole so big? You might think it's not a huge deal until a scav with a Taz slug just goes, well, what do we have here? And rearranges your rib cage and the organs therein through this conveniently placed hole. So, yeah, um, this armor is good. Overall, I'd say it's it's acceptable. This is probably like baseline for armors in Escape from Tarkov. It's nice that it has throat protection, which protects you from like buckshot and stuff like that and pistolings. But that giant hole is a problem to me. So yeah, it's gonna go into C tier. Then we have this one. I think it's also a 6B13 variant. I, I can't remember all the armor names off the top of my head, but basically the exact same thing as the, uh, the previously mentioned armor. So that is also going into C tier. I think the only major difference is you can craft this one in the laboratory and I've been doing that just to level hideout. So I've used these quite a bit and they're okay. Then we have the 6B23. The 6B23 is very solid. Um, it's less expensive than the 6B13s. It's available very early on. I think it slight, does a slightly better job at covering your armpit, though there's still a massive hole right there. Uh, the biggest issue I have with this one is for whatever reason, Ragman doesn't sell you the back plate when you buy the bloody thing. He is scalping you. Like that's, that's freaking ridiculous, dude. But um, yeah, you can buy that extra plate, I believe from Propor for like 15K. It's not so bad. Overall, this armor is fairly solid, does the job. Eventually I'm gonna run a Koran plate in this thing cause it'd be hilarious, but I can't award it anything higher than a C. It does the job, but it's nothing special. Then we have the OTV rig. I quite like it. However, it does again, leave your throat completely exposed. There's nothing all that special about it but it does a fairly decent job. I love throwing either ceramic, aluminum, or polyethylene plates in this thing and just having a very light rig. But again, nothing super remarkable about it. I can't rank it any higher than a C. Then we have the 6B5, but the green variant. This one actually has tier four armor on the front and the back, and you can find it on scavs all the time. It's actually a very, very good rig. This is the one I used all through the early wipe. It did a very, very good job. I quite like this rig. This is, if you find this on a scav and you don't have good armor, this is what you want to take. So why am I placing it in C tier? Well, again, it's freaking heavy. It's like 12.2 kilograms. I don't know why it's that heavy, but it's freaking heavy. So while it is very, very good from a protection standpoint, I am a person who likes to run light. So... That is a problem for me. That's much more of a personal gripe. This could probably get moved up into B tier, if I'm being honest, based on protection and availability, but the weight is a major holdup for me. So that is gonna go into C, um, but overall, it's a very solid armor. All right, now I'm gonna talk about armors that their protection isn't great. It's actually kind of bad, but they offer some other utility. Uh, for instance, in this tier, it's their B tier because they are light and they're cheap. And that actually has a good use case that I'll explain later. But first off, we have the MBSS. This has no extra protection. It has no extra coverage. It is literally just a plate carrier. The only thing that you are blocking when you are wearing this are shots that hit you directly in the chest and directly in the back. So this sounds like a terrible rig, and it kind of is if you're rushing dorms, if you're rushing factory, if you are pushing into positions where you are in close quarters engagements, these are not the rigs you want to wear. That being said, there is a use case for rigs such as these, and that is woods, shoreline, on these big open maps where you're not expecting to run straight into somebody, and you're much more looking for those long range engagements, these are fantastic because they are cheap, and they are light. Also, if you're on those other maps, that extra tier two Kevlar protection isn't gonna help you anyways. Think about it. So you're on woods, right? You have some nice little throat protection. It's tier two Aramid, you're feeling great. And then an M80 round just casually comes over and rips straight through it and blows your throat out the other direction. Yeah, that tier two Aramid isn't doing anything. It might as well not be there. So Yes, it can help against the mythical Bushwookie scab with 7mm buckshot, but on the whole, that extra air mid isn't going to be doing too much for you. And that is where these rigs shine. They don't offer that extra protection, but they are light and they protect the stuff that you are most likely going to get hit by at longer distances. Well, except for your head, but you know, whatever. Other rigs that fall into this exact category for the same reason, the TV-115, the USEC Trooper, the Shellback Banshee, and the MMAC. 
All of these rigs offer, you know, not the greatest coverage, but they are light and they are cheap and they protect what is important. If you are on a more wide open map or on a map where people already have very high pen ammo, these will serve you just fine. So for that reason, they are gonna go into B tier. Their overall coverage is either a C or a D, but because of their cheapness and how light they are, I think they deserve a B in those specific use cases. Now I'm gonna talk about rigs that are B tier because of the fact that they provide really good rig space or pouch space or something of that matter. And first off, I'm gonna start with the AVS. Again, AVS's protection isn't the best. It does have side uh, armor that you can load into it, but it leaves your throat very, very exposed and the armpit is annoying to get shot into. But what this does have is a very nice rig configuration. You get two uh, four slot pouches, you get a ton of space for mags. If you're running an RPD, or if you're running drum mags, or if you just want a grizzly, or if you're just trying to loot stuff so that you can leave through sewer manhole, these things still have a use case and they're still somewhat worthy of a slightly higher ranking. I'm gonna put that into B. Going into the exact same category again, we have the Ars Arma A18. Uh, just giant amount of uh, rig space. We have the TV-110, very, very solid pouch configuration. You get, again, two uh, four slots. I used this when I was making the RPD video. Um, the Ars Arma A18. I love this rig. Unfortunately, again, it's air mid protection is just not good, but giant pouch space. It's going into B. The Strandhog is mostly here because it has that one two by two slot and also it protects the goods. So I can admire that about an armor. Overall, this one's probably the one that could shirk just a little bit higher into B tier on its own, but overall, I'm gonna leave it in this spot. It does have a very nice pouch configuration, um, and I think it's still an armor worth using, so it's going into B. And rounding off this tier of special B tiers is, or is the Anna M1 rig for, again, the exact same reason. I'm going to reiterate, these armors don't have the greatest protection but they offer something that is still worth considering when ranking them, and that is very good pouch space. So on maps where you're not gonna be running straight into people at like point blank distances, these will serve you just fine. All right, now moving into B tier in terms of actual good protection. First off, we have the RBAV. This is very similar to Strandhog, except it covers just a little bit more and it's slightly better. Um, so that is gonna go into B tier. Then we have the press armor. Now, you might be surprised that I'm ranking it this high, but allow me to explain. I don't rank things based purely on what is most protective, what has a higher number, because I feel like everyone could kind of do that. I'm ranking this thing this high because of its accessibility. It is available very early on and provides solid protection against scabs, pistolings, and just people running not so great ammo. That tier two throat protection has saved me more times than I can count. Now, I heard it was bugged. I don't think it's bugged anymore. They said it was patched. I only started using it recently after it was supposedly patched. So hopefully I'm not giving you bad info, but if it's working the way it's supposed to, it's a very solid rig that offers you solid protection, especially in the early wipe. Now, as you progress, obviously you're gonna wanna start to move on to better things, but if you are broke, if you need a budget thing, or if it's just early in the wipe, this thing has you covered. Then we have the Thor IC. This is just a fairly solid rig overall. Offers decent coverage. You can put in side armor that doesn't hang all the way down. It covers most of your armpit. Um, inexpensive, takes whatever, obviously whatever Western plate you want, looks good. I love this armor. It's gonna go into B tier, it's quite good. Then we have the Defender 2. The Defender 2 probably could be ranked a bit higher, but it, A, it doesn't offer much side protection. You can't put plates on the sides. And also, its throat protection isn't the best. It does say it has a neck cover, but that seems like it's only right in the front because I've shot people straight in the back of the neck, not the head, but just barely in the top of the back, and it seems to drop them instantly. And that was with like seven millimeter buckshot. So while the Defender 2 is a fairly solid armor overall, it does have a few exposed portions that um, leave something to desire, and for that reason, it is going to go into B tier. Then we have the Kilo Armor. Yeah, this is probably gonna be a controversial one. People are probably surprised that I'm putting it this low. Personally, I think people are overranking it and overhyping it right now because, I mean, it's the Kilo Armor. It looks good. It's been one of the best armors in the game for the past, 
I don't know, three years? Of course people are gonna rank it high. The problem that I have with it is, again, giant exposed armpit. Sure, it has tier three aramid in the throat, it has tier three aramid in places other than the plate, and then the plate itself is tier five, but again, giant armpit. It could be the best armor in the game, but armpit. It's a solid armor, but armpit is completely exposed, and for that reason, I am unwilling to put it any higher than B tier. Rounding off B tier is the Osprey Mark IV. Um, it is only tier 2 Aramid protection in the extra areas, but it covers basically every part of your upper body, so 7mm buckshot is now a problem of the past, uh, low tier pistol rounds aren't a problem, and its coverage is just really really good. Also, it takes whatever western plates you want, so you can put tier 5s, tier 4s, whatever in there, and I do prefer the western plate over, Killa, over the Killer Rig's eastern plate, so that is going to go into the top of B tier. Then in A tier, the first one I'm going to mention is the Korund. The Korund, I wasn't so sure about. The Korund, I think, could either go into A or it could drop into B. I mostly like how accessible it is. You get it from tier 4 Propor, which is an easy... You get it surprisingly quicker than you get tier 4 Ragman, I tell you. Going from level 0 to 36 versus 36 to 42 is... Uh, 36 to 42 is a journey. So having this armor available earlier on is very, very nice. It does cover most of your body fairly well. That being said, it's only tier 2, so you're mostly worried about, again, buckshot, uh, pistol rounds. But the tier 5 plates are quite nice, so for that reason, I'm putting it into A tier for its accessibility. But if you wanted to drop it into B tier, that's I, I would understand completely. Uh, then we have the, uh, the Redut M. Very, very solid armor. I think it protects just a bit more of the neck than the Defender 2 does. And it can also have side plates inserted. So, very, very solid. I had a buddy who got one of these early on, and he was just bullying people for quite a while until he got murdered by a cheater. So, but, you know, that's that's just the way it goes. Um, so, the Redut M, very, very solid, very nice. Also going into A tier. Then we have all the heavy armors. The Zabrolo, the, the Thor, the... Um, the Samurai Armor, and um, the Gen 4 Full. I'm gonna be real, I do not like these armors. I do just, I, I hate the, how they're too heavy, they're too cumbersome, they affect movement that much. As someone who likes to sprint around and use movement in Tarkov a lot more, I have a problem with these armors. Now, are they very good at covering your body? Yes. Are they probably gonna be in the meta this wipe? Yes. Do I still not like them that much? Yeah, so... I'm going to put them into A tier because that's probably where they belong. Me personally, I think they're a B tier, but whatever. Finishing off A tier is the Gen 4 Assaults. Literally just the coverage of the Gen 4 full, um, except lighter. Obviously, it doesn't protect the, uh, the lower regions quite as well as the Gen 4 full, but considering that there's less of a movement penalty, I'll take it. Very solid armor, very solid coverage going into A tier. Then starting us off in S tier, we have the Osprey Mark IV that has the tier three Aramid and Kevlar. Um, why is this one better than the Gen 4 Assault when they're pretty much the same thing? Well, one, this one is a rig as well. It has pouches, you don't need to add extra weight, and I'm pretty sure it's lighter than the Gen 4 Assault. So for those two reasons, I think it deserves to go into S tier. They're pretty interchangeable, but Overall, I think this is just a better armor. So yeah, it's going into S tier. Uh, also in S tier is the Gijel. Personally, I don't like that it uses a uh, Eastern style plate as much. It again, leaves apparently more of your thorax exposed. So while that is mostly a blind luck, if you get hit there, it's still something that can happen. So I don't like it as much, but I can't deny that it's a it's a fairly lightweight rig that does a good job at covering your body and your throat, and overall it's just really solid. So that is going to go into S tier. The green Jux, I think this is called the Jux 6, I don't remember what this thing is called. It's going into S tier as well, it's basically just a green Gajel. Um, one that is making a surprise appearance in S tier is the Karasa. What the hell is this thing doing here? Again, this comes down to accessibility. I love this armor so much because it offers solid throat protection, good coverage overall for tier two protection, but it's also able to use Western plates, which I think cover your chest better. So 
obviously it's not as good as the other armors that are up here, but it is very accessible. You get it very, very early on, and it will carry you through the early and mid wipe. This is the one that I was using a lot. It has saved me a lot from scavs with buckshot, from players with pistols. I love this armor, and I'm putting it into S tier. I'm going to make it abundantly clear. Its coverage is worse than the other options in this category, but you get it so much faster, and it is so much more accessible, and therefore, I think it deserves to get bumped up quite a bit. So yeah, I'm putting it into S tier. And finishing off with what is probably the best armor in the game right now, that is the Gen 4 HMK High Mobility Kit. Um, apart from protecting your butt and your gonads, um, it just offers very solid coverage, doesn't leave your uh, armpit completely exposed. It's tier 3 protection all the way around up to your throat. You can put in side plates, you have a host of options for front plates, very, very good piece of armor. This is what, every time I've encountered a very, very geared player, uh, level 43, level 52, stuff like that, this is what they have been wearing, and it has been mostly effective at preventing me from killing them. So, solid armor, excellent choice, going into S tier. And that'll about do it. Um, thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Play for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link below. You will also get that lovely sign-on bonus of 100,000 Silver Lions, 7 days of premium, 3 premium vehicles, other goodies. And remember, until the end of January, you will also get those 3 seasonal decals, uh, the Grinch, Rudolph, and the Elf, so be sure to check it out. All right, sponsored stuff out of the way. Just thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. I hope you found this video at least somewhat informative and entertaining. Um, also do keep in mind, just because an armor doesn't exactly have the best coverage, it doesn't mean it's worthless and doesn't have any uses whatsoever. So absolutely be sure you're paying attention to coverage. Make sure, you know, if you're gonna be running close up, you use armor that covers everything. But on there are certain cases, like on more open maps, where less coverage is better because you get less weight. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end, and I really hope you enjoyed.